the Archdiocese of Toronto, and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, presents Sunday TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday TV Mass on the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. My name is Father Peter Turonen. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from two donors. The first is A. McCougal from Tweed, Ontario, for the intentions of her children and friends, and in thanksgiving for all blessings received. The second is Vincent Blakenship from Greensbury, Texas, in support of the daily TV Mass. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You were seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then Elijah lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. Elijah got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food, forty days and forty nights, to Horeb, the mountain of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. shall continually be in mind. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> Glory to you, O Lord. The people began to complain about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent him draw them and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. And this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Jesus. Jesus. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. My brothers and sisters, we know that when God has to reveal something to us fully, right, in the person of Christ, our Lord and Savior, he does things slowly. And we always look to the beginning. We find the seeds already planted in the Old Testament. 
So what we find is in the first reading from the first book of Kings, we hear about Elijah. So Elijah had just defeated the prophets of Baal. So he was ecstatic over the fact that he was able to show that God performed this miracle to show that in fact that he was worshiping the true God and they weren't. So after this moment of euphoria, what happened? Well, Jezebel was furious. So she wanted to revenge what he had done. So she wanted to kill him. So what does he do? So you see this man at one moment who is profoundly strong and euphoric, right, is now afraid for his own life. So you can see his own fragility. So what does he do? Well, he runs off. He runs off and he's trying to escape death. And while he's on his journey, he becomes incredibly tired. He becomes incredibly tired. He complains to God. But then he hears the Lord say, get up and eat. Get up and eat. And what does God provide for him? Well, he provides a cake baked on hot stones, so bread basically, and a jar of water. So bread and water. What does this sound like? Well, in the gospel that was just proclaimed, we hear Jesus speak about how when the Israelites were in the desert, what did Moses provide, or God provided through Moses? Well, there was water from the rock, and there was the bread, this manna, which would provide them sustenance, physical sustenance, for their journey. So they're going along, but we know that this was a physical substance that, it, again, was useful to them, of course, but it couldn't provide them or prevent them from spiritual death. So they're on this journey for 40 years, and God provides this physical sus sustenance. And then we have in the second reading, again, sorry, in the first reading, we hear how Elijah, he's tired, he's exhausted, he's overwhelmed by life, he's afraid, and then God provides water and bread. Again, this is a physical nourishment that's given to them. But then when we get to the gospel, right, so we went from the Old Testament, we go to the New Testament, then we understand that God who is teaching us, as we heard in the gospel, has something else to teach us. Now, this food that he gives us is no longer bread and water, but now it's his body and blood. And it's not a symbol. It's his literal flesh and blood. It's the same blood and flesh that he offers on the cross, that he offered uh, on Holy Thursday and the night of Holy Thursday and then it's an anticipation of what takes place on Good Friday and of course in the resurrected form we receive Jesus right we receive his body and blood in the Eucharist as he is in heaven so we have this remarkable encounter so why does he give us his own body and blood why does he say that we need to eat his flesh and drink his blood he's the one that gives us his life well our lives are a journey we know that, right? And there's certain moments when we can feel euphoria about what's happening in our spiritual lives or what's happening around us. And there's moments we can feel desolation and we can feel sorrow, we can feel confused, we can feel fear. And, and there, the Lord always offers his word and he offers us his body. So it's incredibly important for us in order to receive his body and his blood and to listen to his word frequently. Why? Because this is how I receive the strength for my journey, for your journey. And not only do we have the grace to be able to receive, but we can also contemplate the Lord in Eucharistic adoration. As Pope Francis is constantly re reminding us, right, reminding Ca the Catholic faithful, and he's saying, it's a beautiful moment to be before the Lord when we can pour out our hearts to him. He who loves us and he wants to know everything that's going on inside of our hearts, of course he's God and he already knows that, but he wants us to be able to share with him in the intimacy of this divine friendship. So a little while ago, we were in Italy, we we're on pilgrimage, and it was a very Eucharistic pilgrimage. Of course, we had Mass every single day, so we started off with Mass at the tomb of St. Peter, and we ended off with Mass at the tomb of St. Mark. But when we went to visit all the different shrines and pray uh, to God through the intercession of so many different saints, the one thing they all had in common was that they recognized that they cannot live their lives, their spiritual lives, and they cannot overcome the challenges or work through them without having received communion, without having gone to Mass, without having received the body and blood of our Lord. And it was incredibly profound to be able to be in those different places, again, all throughout Italy. Uh, we were at, at uh, Assisi, so we went to St. Clair's 
beautiful convent where there are many cloistered nuns still to this day. And there's always this image that St. Clair has with the Eucharist in her hand because it was because of the presence of the Eucharist in the convent that was placed before the doors that prevented them from being destroyed, being killed by the Saracens. Then we went to Blessed Carlo Acutis as well, who's buried not far from there. Again, it was a great opportunity to see this young man, right, the first millennial saint who's going to be canonized next year, who deeply loved Jesus in the Eucharist. And he spent all of his time evangelizing the world via YouTube, helping people to recognize that that's really Jesus Christ. That isn't just a piece of bread. It's not bread. Even though it looks like it, it's actually Christ Jesus in heaven. And then he started off this beautiful apostolate, which continues to this day. So many different places, the one thing that all the saints have in common is that they're constantly receiving the body and blood of our Lord and also contemplating Him in private prayer and devotion. So we pray and we ask God for the grace to recognize this great gift and to do everything that we can to be able to receive Him. And for those that cannot, we continue to pray and we encourage you to make spiritual communions with the Lord. God knows your hearts, He knows your desires, and if you cannot be there, I promise you in the faith of the church that the Lord will come and visit you. So we ask God for this grace and also to send people to help you so that you are able to get to Mass and to receive Holy Communion if you are at home as well. Let us now profess the faith, the faith of all the saints. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With all of our hearts and minds united, let us pray to the Lord, laying our requests before His most sacred heart. And the response is, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For all of those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, we pray to the Lord. In our community prayer this month, we seek for ourselves and for the Church a deeper love and understanding of the gift that the risen Christ makes of Himself to us in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. For an end to violence perpetrated by harsh words and deadly weapons or cold indifference, for peace in our homes, our nations, and throughout the entire world, we pray. God of light, to live in your house is the desire of all of your children. Hear our prayers and help us in all their needs. Through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Clair of Assisi, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with yours. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.